Okay, so I decided to make this video today to talk about uh, my experiences with uh, uh, Shutterstock and Adobe uh, Stock or Fotolia in the last, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but for the last uh, year or a bit. Um, and as a background, I haven't been uploading it super regularly. I probably have around 70 to 100 photos on both uh, sites. Um, the reason I wanted to make this video is because I've been seeing so many YouTube videos about how people are making passive income from it. And I was like, I like taking photos. I have a lot of photos on my hard drive. I'm like, might as well see if any of them will sell. Um, so yeah, I'll go over a few different things related to um, uh, Adobe versus Shutterstock. Um, so for each download per average for each photos that I have um, made sales on, uh, the average on um, Shutterstock is about 0 0.53, 53 cents per download. Um, that is with 79 downloads and I've only made $41.74 in US dollars. And on Adobe, um, it was averaging a dollar and 12 uh, per download. Um, so I had f only 34 downloads, which is like less than half, but in that same amount, made $38. Um, so the funny thing is I actually got my first uh, PayPal deposit from Adobe stock first because the payout uh, is at a lower amount. I think it's 20 or $25 versus um, Shutterstock is actually 35. So at least for the PayPal option. So that was one of the biggest difference. Um, there's definitely been a lot more traffic on Shutterstock, but the average per download has been a lot less. Um, Want to take a look at some of my um, highest uh, earnings for photos. And so the amount that you get from the photo depends on the person downloading it, uh, if they have a subscription or if they're a one-time purchase or uh, what type of rights they buy for the image for the commercial photo um, and it's funny because both photos uh, both on Shutterstock and Adobe that actually made the most for me was a photo that I've taken um, using my mobile phone um, I, because of COVID recently I decided to take a, just a simple letterboard type style photo of uh, coming soon or opening soon uh, sign and I put it on a nice little shelf that we have it that my wife picked out um, and a plant that we had in the house which is a fake plant and it's actually sold for the highest amount per per the photo um, on sh Shutterstock it sold for ten dollars and ten cents and an Adobe it was about seven dollars something um, and it's just two different photos I took with my cell phone um, on a really well lit uh, uh, shelf and that was it. Uh, the lowest uh, on Shutterstock it's been around 10 cents that's the lowest that you'll get per download at least that I've been seeing and those are, I believe is from subscription um, if a subscription user is downloading your photos then you get 10 cents uh, the lowest amount for Adobe was around 23 cents um, uh, otherwise, most of the time I've seen Adobe was around 99 cents for a photo. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is the acceptance and review process. Um, Shutterfly, uh, Shutterstock, not Shutterfly, definitely has a faster review process. For me here in Canada, uh, in Calgary, uh, when I upload the photos at night around 12 or so, it actually gets reviewed overnight in the AM, um, like around 2 or 3 and like there's been photos where I submitted it late in the night and I would get uh, accepted or declined right away, approved or declined right away. Um, while Adobe Stock usually takes around a, um, a week or a week and a half, which isn't bad, but Shutterstock definitely has a faster um, acceptance or approval uh, time frame. Um, and I guess in that reflects how fast it gets on to be available online content as well. Um, what I found though in the review process is that um, Shutterstock's reviewers, depending on who looks at it, uh, can um, decline it or point out something 
uh, related to noise or sharpness or focus, even though the per photo might be fine. And if you resubmit it, um, someone else might accept it, the exact same photo. So I've done that a few times where um, I resubmit it because I was like, the subject is definitely in focus, um, but the approver, I don't know if it's a matter of how fast they review it, that they don't uh, stop and actually look carefully, but sometimes the photos do get accepted afterwards. Um, there's an option to indicate that the photo has been submitted before, so I think that way, I think maybe a different reviewer looks at the photo. Uh, that's my guess. So uh, in terms of uh, Adobe, um, I haven't had as many photos rejected with Adobe, but I also kind of have a heads up on what gets accepted based on Shutterstock because of how fast it gets uh, approved. Uh, in terms of uh, mobile apps for looking at um, your stock photography, um, I really like Shutterstock as an app and uh, you get a notification when one of your photos has been downloaded and it's really quick to just pull it up and see how much your um, photo has been downloaded and how much you earned from it. The downside, is, um, there isn't a downside to having that. Uh, I don't think there was email notification with Shutterstock. Uh, I don't know if I just didn't set up for it, but with the app, I get the notifications right on my phone. With Adobe Stock, um, they have email notification about your daily earning report. Um, it's not on a daily, it's only on the days where you have downloads. They'll send you an email uh, telling you the total that you made from that day, which I guess works pretty much just the same as an app, but you just don't get to see all your photos without signing in on your mobile phone the same way. Uh, with the app, it's convenient that way, I guess. Um, with Shutterstock, there is both commercial and editorials. So this allows you to upload photos with uh, logos or recognizable buildings and with people without uh, release um, release forms. Uh, well, I, I haven't been able to find a way to do that on Adobe Stock. It seems like as soon as there's a people or recognizable place, you have to upload uh, it because uh, you need special release forms and you can only upload it for commercial. Uh, when I did a search, it seems like only special people get invited for the editorials on Adobe. Um, and I haven't hit that spot, I guess. Uh, so if you want to upload photos of famous buildings or when you're traveling, those photos definitely have to be uploaded under editorials on Shutterstock. And there's just a special notation where you have to include the date and the location uh, and um, some details on where we took that photo. Um, yeah, so that's the difference. Uh, with sh Shutterstock, another thing I really like is there's uh, keywording tools available right on the upload site. Uh, Adobe has some, but the interface is not as good. They give you suggestions, but Shutterstock is a really good one where you can search with keywords on cinema photos and you pick three photos and then pick a lot of bunch of keywords. Um, that show up for those photos and then you can just quickly click on those instead of trying to come up with 50 keywords yourself. Uh, for Adobe Stock, an alternative to that is you can use Xpix or uh, I, imstalker.com. Uh, I, I am, like I am stalker. Anyways, there's alternatives to ways of generating uh, keywords, but it's really nice that Shutterstock has that built in and since they have such a huge library of photos, you can search similar photos that you like and that you think your photos are similar to and pick that way. Um, and in terms of Shutterstock, uh, I think in the recent changes, there's probably more YouTube videos about the recent changes of how the percentage of how much you earn from each photo makes. Um, there's a, actually a detailed breakdown depending on which level you are. Um, since I have only had a, under 100 downloads, I'm actually at level 1. So it's the lowest percentage of like 15% uh, earnings. But the more downloads you get, you get more percentage of the royalty when people download your photo. So I'm hoping I'll hit 100 photos before the end of the year, but I believe it restarts every year. Um, but I'm at 79 or 80 photos right now. Um, we'll see if I make it there to the next bracket. 
maybe I'll do a follow-up video for that afterwards. Um, and uh, I'll show it on the screen later, but um, on the PowerPoint I had, there's a, my, a couple photos of my most downloaded, just to give you an idea of what's been downloaded the most on both platforms. Um, it's funny, on both websites, the most downloaded photo was a picture of dangerous goods uh, uh, transportation signs. And it's just uh, one that I took at a museum uh, with a bunch of these dangerous uh, goods and good signs. And I guess it's been downloaded the most. Um, it's been downloaded 37 times on Shutterstock and 11 times on Adobe Stock. And yeah. It's been interesting. It's one of the photos I put up. I thought like, hey, maybe it will sell because I guess someone making a presentation or doing something would need a photo um, and probably won't be searching for, uh, won't be going out to uh, download or take a photo of all these signs. Um, yeah, and then some of the other ones that sold really well on Shutterstock was actually ones where I did designated shoots um, with notebooks and whatnot and just did a little lay flat setup and that was just for fun. Yeah, and I guess this sums up the few things from my experiences um, on Shutterstock and Adobe. I've been in both platforms probably since early January is when I started doing a lot of uh, uploading uh, and keywording and I definitely haven't been putting in loads of hours. I have a full-time job. <laughs> um, this is just for fun, just to see if I can make any money off some of the photos I had on my um, hard drives, as well as uh, as a little creative outlet. If I have an idea of things I have around the house and want to create some cool images for lay flats that I think might, um, might be something that people look for. Uh, on Shutterstock and Adobe, they actually send out like shot lists of things that people might be looking for in the upcoming month. Um, sometimes I've been looking at those, but sometimes I just don't have uh, the time to go shoot with people um, to get those certain model releases signed up and whatnot. So I've been mainly uploading photos without people, or if it is, then I'll upload them as an editorial, but mainly it's been um, just very general photos that you would think people might want to download. Um, yeah, and that's my experience with these two platforms. I'll see if uh, it continues. Uh, based on my current portfolio in both system, it seems like I can make a couple of dollars a month. It's definitely not uh, get rich and make it fast, <laughs> uh, passive income, but for if you want to just make a couple extra bucks per month from it and you have photos that you don't mind posting online to um, sell for different uses, uh, this is a good way to do it, I guess. Um, right now, I would say I still haven't probably broke even with the amount of hours I did keywording. Uh, I found keywording and writing a good description takes up most of my time. And yeah, the amount of times to do those keywording and stuff um, definitely does not count for my hourly rate, I guess, for the 40 something dollars I've earned from Shutterstock and 30 something dollars from uh, Adobe. But at least it's a, it's some money for those photos that are just sitting on a hard drive. Uh, if you can get a friend or someone that likes keywording and do that for you in the background, I think that would probably be great or you just uh, plan it well. What I've been doing is I've been doing the keywording um, in Shutterstock and copying those keywords uh, into uh, Adobe Stock so I don't have to type them in twice. Um, and Xpix I found has been a good solution where you can just add the keywords directly and the description and title. And when you upload it to both sites, all you need to do is click on a couple more um, boxes like it, does it have recognizable people or locations or um, is it editorial or um, or commercial on Shutterstock, and then you can just hit submit and you already have all that information. Uh, so that interface will, I guess, simplify your workflow a little bit. I've been starting to use it. I only used it once. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I can't think of anything else. Oh, Shutterstock. If you're uploading 
a set of photos from one shoot. I've been figuring out that you shouldn't upload them all at once. Uh, sometimes you get dinged on uploading stuff for similar content, even though they might be different framing or different uh, visual effects for it. Um, it's better to just break out the similar photos, send some in first, and then see if it gets accepted, and then submit them at a later time. Because if it's one reviewer looking at all your photos, there's a high chance they'll say it's similar and just dismiss it, even though you, the, your creative idea was to do different framing or uh, different options for the photo. So that was one thing that I found out. And one of the biggest thing that I learned is not to submit uh, 50 photos um, all at once if they are very similar or because um, if one of them have an uh, issue and you didn't realize it would get rejected you just wasted a lot of time submitting a bunch of photos and then having to recopy and paste all those keywords and description um, it kind of sucks on Shutterstock you can't for a rejected photo I haven't been able to find a way to boot it back into the submission uh, page uh, so you essentially have to just copy your uh, keywords from the rejected photo into one that you re-uploaded. Um, so that part has been a little frustrating, but I guess it works. So yeah, I guess I will maybe do another follow-up at the end of the year to see where I'm at. Um, please share with me what uh, your experiences are with uh, Adobe Stock and Shutterstock. Um, I have included referral links in the links be uh, in the description below. Um, so if you decide to try out Shutterstock, use the referral link, that will help me. I think I get a little bit for a referral. Um, but yeah, just wanted to share with you my just pure experience with both platforms. See you in the next video.